Let's try to take a look at how, for example, we could build or sculpt something like the bottom part of the Coke bottle. So we end up with a really nice and smooth surface. So let's go to alias. I actually know that by, by having measured in the design that I actually have six centimeter wide and roughly 4.5 centimeter tall bottom part. So what I'm going to do first is actually create maybe a layer called profile. Then I'm going to use the key point curve and use the circle. And in top view, I am going to alt click at the world center zoom in and for example create a circle let me change my grid a little bit and i can select this key point curve go to information window attributes and for example there i see the radius is 10 centimeters it's the distance for diameter should be six so 30 and there i have for example the radius i need i could for example copy and paste this ring and for example move it up exactly 45 units actually that was not correct I can click move and then enter 0 space 0 space 45 to move it up 0 along x 0 along y and 45 units which is millimeters so 4.5 centimeters along the z-axis so if I click this one and go to transformation information here I see it is moved along 45 units along the z-axis now this is I'm going to use this actually as simply as a reference so I will set the state to reference now I'm going to create and a p-curve and maybe a degree 3 will do it and if I press control there's nothing I can click on to because the moment I set this layer to uh, reference I don't see those points anymore so I can't click to it but actually with control and alt I can click to the curve so that's one of the main reasons why to set something to reference I can use it as guidelines now I'm going to select CV, go to move along the x-axis, move this one in, this one along the z-axis, move it down, select this part, go to pivot, alt, and reset the pivot point. I'm going to create a new layer, let's call this one curves. And this one I'm going to add to that layer. New layer. And I call this one Revolve. And I can go to the Revolve surface. Set this one to Z. Use local. Local makes use of the pivot point we set. And actually I'm going to now we have to do a little bit of calculation we can actually play with those bands well, let me show you actually what for example the difference between this surface and periodic surfaces now this is actually an open surface that means at the end you see here that's the end where the, the sheet of paper is wrapped around and meet each other I need to maintain a nice circular profile those extra vertices left and right to pull that surface to the edge so it looks 
circular. If we set this one to periodic, it is actually a closed surface. And you see the um, subdivision or the division of those control vertices is nice and even. That's perfect for sculpting. This one might be more preferred by other applications for sculpting. This is really what we like. Okay, so I see that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I could say pull in, pull in, pull in, pull in, pull in, pull in. Okay, so maybe let's give this a try. So I click next, make a new layer, and call this one maybe sculpt. So this part I copy and paste onto that layer. You can turn everything else off. And you see by this copy and paste and moving to the layer, the construction history is gone. And that's actually what I want because I want to now be able to sculpt the detail. So I can click, click, and drag over those parts. And then actually click scale and see how, for example, everything deforms and what shape I can generate. I could maybe make this a little bit more interesting by also selecting those points of the next row. This video also shows you some of the a process a workflow, how you start blocking out parts and then making use of the layers to structure your design. So I'm scaling those inwards a little bit as well. I'm going to side view and you will see actually that the scaling moved them down because it goes to the pivot point. So in a side view I can go to move, right mouse button, control and snap them back to those points. So the height remains the same. Let's take a look at what this one looks like. Okay, so that's actually interesting, but it's not really the shape we want. So we need more points. So this was a good attempt, but it didn't really work. So I'm going to delete this one. I'm going back to this one and now I have to see how many I might need. Maybe let's try 21. So I copy and paste, assign, and now I'm going to only select everyone after three units. And I think I actually made a mistake. Calculated one, two, three. Yeah, I actually added uh, one too much. So I'm actually going back. So this one I'm going to select and delete. So you see I'm always, uh, or I'm always, I'm never actually doing the sculpting with my masterpiece because simply that actually could, uh, well, I can't sculpt my masterpiece because then the construction history is going to be adjusted. So if I click this point, say move, I get the warning. I don't want that. So that's the reason why I copy and paste, move this one over. So I have a new clean one unrelated to any object and I can sculpt. So here three one three one three one three one three one one two three perfect. Okay great so those I can scale.
So this, for example, gets me already closer to maybe what I'm looking at. So you see with more points on the outside, I actually maintain more of the surface. Again, always keep in mind, the more points you have closer, the more it pulls surface together. If I only have a single point, um, it smooths out the surface more or stabilizes it. So those three points have a magnetic force to keep the surface more here and the single point cannot pull so much of the geometry to the center. Now also here I can now be actually very creative. You also see that in this process I utilize the construction history to create very simplified and clean um, basic models and then actually I sculpt the details into it. I do not try to create all this actually with profiles. This is much cleaner, also less painful, and the transitions are just perfect. So for example, I moved those in a little bit more. So you can just play and sculpt. To finish the bottom part, actually what we can do in this case, we simply use the planar uh, surface, cap this one, and then I would like to apply a basic rounding. So we can go to the round tool, click on this one. Of course, the fillet is way too big, so I have to scale it down. And I need to find a radius that is uh, small enough so that it can flow along this green line. And of course, it should be big enough so that it's visible maybe a little bit bigger, like this. What is actually nice about the round tool is I can actually add multiple radii. So for example, I'm going to position that one there. And what value do we have? Uh, this is maybe two, let's see. See, I can simply type in a number, rebuild, okay, this works. And then I can click and click and click, don't drag because the moment you click and then drag, you change the radius. And then I add another radius here. And maybe I set this one down to one go to the top view and I try to hit kind of like the midpoints. Okay, so let's see how this one is going to look. Build. You see the edge tool allows me to do a variable radius where I can make a nice blend between different values. For example, let's try to see if maybe, how this maybe would look with a 4. Oh, actually it does. So Let's go ahead, four, four, and four, build. So it gives a nice variation, so it all doesn't look exactly the same. To remove a radius, it's actually very easy. Shift, click on this arc, and it's gone. So that's the way how, for example, we use the um, edge running tool to create a variable radius. Just kind of like as a tip to continue the whole idea about how to structure everything. See this part actually I really like so I maintain maybe this part and I can turn on my previous profiles. You will see actually that I added some more of those curves which I realize I have to set for all actually the pivot point, go back, go to here. And I can actually simply go ahead, go to revolve, select this one, and 
half the roll still turned on here and there, for example, create my missing surfaces. And you see that this part I keep open because I would like to show you there are two ways how we can actually deal with this. I could also fill this one. And then actually I would have to select the and then I would have to select the surface fillet with a really small radius and for example blend between them. Okay, so that one works. Maybe we can make this a little bit bigger there. Okay. And next there and there. Build. Okay, so you see I built hard edge models and then the edge rounding I did actually with the fillet. Here I could also, for example, select the surface blend and then work with this edge to this edge. And let's try to see how this looks. You see this is a more soft in general transition. For example, up here I have more linear side faces and rounded edges. So there, there are multiple ways how you can deal with those parts based on really what you're actually looking for. So the nice part about this is actually all those surfaces which I'm going to select now, I'm going to put onto, um, uh, let's put them onto a new layer, assign, uh, maybe call this one surface and then I'm going to select CV. I can select all those upper points and for example now decide well maybe this bottle is a little bit too tall. I move these CVs down and then my whole design tree got updated and you notice actually alias took a second to do that so while this is a very simple model that step already required a little bit of calculation for alias. So even here you can select those and maybe make this a little bit rounder, maybe not too much. So kind of like trying to drive lots of geometry by the least amount of input curves possible. So this I wanted to sculpt by hand to get all the details. The rest I was then actually able to just use the revolve command because those are very symmetrical unsculpted surfaces.